Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is a beautiful Sunday. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's a beautiful day. God's going to do great things. This is just a start. Wonderful, wonderful. There's no children's church this morning. We do have a nursery available uh, right after the service. We're having a birthday celebration for our lead pastor. So over in the Life Center, we'll be meeting over there. I believe they got sandwiches and salads. And Tuesday is our food pantry, 6 to 7.30, over at the Life Center. And i just real quick ask you to pray. I think I found somebody who replaced me at the campground. So uh, pray that it goes through and she gets approved. And I appreciate it. He gave me an opportunity to minister. She had lost her son and grandson and passed away, and so I was able to pray with her and had a little, good little discussion. So if you're stand, I'm going to read out of Isaiah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 41, verses 4 through 10 in the Message Bible. Hallelujah. Who did this? Who made it happen? Who always gets things started? I did. God. I'm first on the scene. I'm also the last to leave. Far-flung ocean islands see it in panic. The ends of the earth are shaken fearfully. They huddle together. They try to help each other, making up stories in the dark. The God-makers in the workshops go into overtime production, creating new models of no gods, urging one another on. Good job. Great design, pounding nails in the base so these things won't tip over. But you, Israel, are my servant. You, Jacob, my first choice, descendants of my good friend Abraham, I pulled you in from all over the world, called you in from every dark corner of the earth, telling you, you're my servant, serving by my side. I picked you. I haven't dropped you. Don't panic. I'm with you. There's no need to fear, for I'm your God. I give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. I'll keep a firm grip on you. <laughs> Little song, Angels Among Us. I was walking home from school one cold winter day. Took a shortcut through the woods and lost my way. It was getting late. I was scared and alone, and a kind old man took me by my hand and led me home. Mama couldn't see him, but he's standing right there, and I knew in my heart he was the answer to my prayer. Oh, I believe there's angels among us sent down to us from somewhere up above. They come to you and me in our darkest hours, show us how to live. Teach us how to give to guide us with a light of love. There were so many faces and show up in the strangest places. They grace us with their mercy in our time of need. Father, thank you. <laughs> You're always with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. And as we take this time now, as we gather together in your name, in your house, We'll lift up our worship to you, Father. Let it be a sweet savor, acceptable. For it's you, for you. You're the reason we're here. Move amongst us, God. Give us your strength. Give us guidance. We'll give you all the glory, praise, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Sherman. Good morning. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Hallelujah. Worship our great and mighty Lord. Hallelujah. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up the banner at the end of the street. Praises to our King. Great 
Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up the banner, let the anthems ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Yes, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord.
the end. When I kneel in prayer, we don't have to hope he will meet us, won't he? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Jesus just started his ministry, he opened up to the scroll of Isaiah and he read this about himself. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That word year is not as we would think of it as a what 365 day year, but it's a time period in the Hebrew. Today is the day of the Lord's favor. God is here. He loves you. He wants to minister to you. If you are bound, he wants to set you free today. If you are discouraged, he wants to encourage you. If you are oppressed, he wants to lift that from you. He loves you. He wants you to have a relationship with him. But whatever your need is right now, because of Jesus, we have the ear of our Father in heaven. And there's prayer needs that we're going to pray over. But you know, um, I want you to sing that song one more time. And whatever your need is, you reach out to Jesus. He loves you. Jesus says no one has greater love than this and he laid down his life for a friend. He's called you friend before you ever knew him. Whether you're in person or you're watching online with us today, God loves you. He's come to set us free. He's come to save us. He's come to encourage. He's come to lift us up. And you reach out to him. You just raise your hands in surrender saying, Jesus, I need you today, and the Lord will meet with you. He gives strength to me as I worship him, and my mouth is filled with praise. upon him because he cares for you. Just give him your need this morning. There's nothing, there's no need that is too big for God. There's no need that is too small. You know, so many people say, I tried this, I tried that. I even prayed. Well, the Lord says, come to me first. Come to me first. Lay your burdens in the Lord's hands. He still heals the sick. He still cleanses the guilty conscience. He still brings in the lost soul into his family. Reach out to Jesus today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for our sister Jennifer, Lord, and she's had another uh, round of chemotherapy. We pray that God, you'll bless and encourage and strengthen our sister, strengthen Joe. Lord, bless them, we pray. God, uh, Aubrey Clay, she is uh, has an infection in COVID. Lord, she needs a, a healing touch from you right now. Lord, my daughter Chloe, around her same age as Aubrey, Lord, dealing with 
uh, different sicknesses, God. We just pray, God, your healing grace to, to touch them right now, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, by your stripes. Lord, past tense, we have been healed. Thank you, Lord. God, we uh, lift up Avery before you, and she is sick. And pray that, Lord, you'll touch this little girl, Lord, that you would strengthen her in her body. Lord, that her parents would know, Lord, that you reached down and touched her, that you'd receive all the glory. God, we pray for that. Lord, we lift up uh, Tom uh, Durham. Uh, Lord, a local family here is a large uh, brain tumor and bleeding. And he's going in tomorrow to find out, uh, uh, Lord, when they're going to do surgery. God, we lift up Tom before you. Lord, we pray, God, in your name, Jesus, we curse that tumor. Lord, that it would shrink, that it would dry up right now, Lord, as the cursed uh, fig tree was cursed. We curse that thing, Lord Jesus, in your name. We pray, God, that you grant him health and life. Lord, that faith would arise in this family's hearts, God, and they would just receive God and believe you, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the God that heals us. Lord, for David uh, Potterbaum, he's uh, uh, on a flight, God. We we lift him up before you, and well, this evening he's going to be on a flight. And Lord, we pray, God, your hedge of protection around him. God, thank you. Thank you as your word says, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Thank you, God, that we can trust you with every need. Lord, Lord, you just want us to trust you. Yes. You just want us, Lord, to, to, to take our issues, our problems, our burdens, and give it into your hands. And Father, I pray that you'd pour out your grace upon your people, God, to be able to do that today. Thank you, Lord. God, thank you for what you have planned for us today. God, I pray that, Lord, our, our every ear would hear, God, what you would have to say to us today. Lord, I pray that our hearts would be softened. Lord, I pray, Jesus, in your name, Lord, that every plan, every disturbance of the evil one would be bound right now. And Holy Spirit, your word says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let each and every person, Lord, listening online or here present, Lord, be free to receive what you have for them today. Father, we thank you for it right now and give you praise in Jesus' name. You, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We received a, a message and a tongue and interpretation from the Holy Spirit. It's a, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and it's a word of encouragement. And God was saying that you are his child. He loves you. He has not forgotten you. He's here to strengthen you, to encourage you. He doesn't want you to forget that he loves you. And uh, you just receive that right now. You receive that. You know, the enemy likes to, likes to pounce on pounce on us and we have things going on, discouragement, uh, maybe sickness, and the enemy comes in and makes us try to feel like we're not loved by God or we're forgotten by him, but it's a lie. It's a lie. Oh, if God did not spare his only son but delivered him up for us all, how much more along with him will he freely give us all things? Oh, Jesus loves you. Your Father loves you. You receive that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, God wants everybody to come to church so we can be encouraged. Amen. We can be ministered to. Praise the Lord. Yes, Christopher. Okay, we'll pray for you, Christopher. And uh, we're, um, we're going to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. At the end of service, we're going to have a, a special offering for our guests today. 
but right now uh, we're going to give our regular tithes and offerings and uh, and we we've been since covid we've been coming up front dropping it off in the in the offering here or there's also a offering plate back there but uh, let's let's pray thank you lord god thank you god that you provide us everything yes god the 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 beautiful flowers that we enjoy the vegetables vegetables we grow and enjoy lord our pets lord the people in our lives god lord that's all gifts from you and lord you tell us not to worry god about our the necessities of life lord god you know what we need and you ask us to trust you to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and all these things will be added so, Lord, today we give to you tithes, we give to you offerings, and we say, Father, we trust you. Jesus, we love you. Yes. Glorify your name. And Thank I pray, you, bless your people as they give today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And there's, you could give online. That's uh, uh, posted on the screen there. Lord bless you. I'm on my way to heaven, and the journey gets sweeter every day. I'm walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, all along the way. My soul gets so happy, I shout and I sing night and day. I'm on my way to heaven, and the journey gets sweeter every day. I'm on my way to heaven, and the journey gets sweeter every day. Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, all along the way. My soul gets so happy, I shout and I sing night and day. I'm on my way to heaven, and the journey gets sweeter every day. Well, praise the Lord. It's always special we have the worship team play for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you, worship team. And they, they love the Lord. And I know it's a blessing to them to, to lead us to, in worship to our God and King. Amen. Well, it's my pleasure to uh, uh, introduce our guest this morning, John Jacobs. He's the founder of the Strength Evangelist Concept and the power team, now called the Next Generation Power Force. He has held over 3,000 crusades in 40 countries. They range from a bullfighting ring in Venezuela to a record number in Moscow, Russia. His team has held over 30,000 public school assemblies in the U.S. alone, where he frequently uh, frequented many of the world's largest churches, like the Potter's House with T.D. Jakes and Lakewood Church, with uh, Joel Olstein, He has been featured on CNN, People Magazine, and almost every major network. You know, I want to pause right there for a moment. There was a, a time when my, my dad had been uh, hurt in church. Uh, he had been on the church board. He was, he was a baby Christian, shouldn't have been there. He got hurt, and you know, he didn't want to go to church anymore. And uh, you know, that can happen, can it? Uh, hurts happen. It's not God. It's people. And uh, but you know, while he was he was at home, and I and I remember I was a teenager, and and the the power team they were on TV, and uh, my my mom and dad before they went to bed they'd have it on their TV in the bedroom, and, and he told me, Brent, you got to see this. You got to see this. These guys they preach the gospel and they're breaking bricks and doing all kinds of stuff, and and you know. Um, John and, and the power team, they, God used them to work in my dad's heart. And he's, he's with Jesus uh, right now. But uh, that was a stepping stone in, in bringing, bringing them to the Lord. And, and you know, I want to share one other testimony. The, John and the power team, they were at uh, Calvary Temple in Naperville. And uh, oh, I was back in the... Let's see, must have been in the late 80s. Uh, yeah, it must have been late 80s, early 90s. I think it was late 80s, though. But my, my sister Michelle, just a little kid, uh, you know, I, 
I brought, brought my younger brothers and sisters to, to that event. And Calvary, Calvary Church, it's a big church. And uh, uh, the altar call was given. And uh, they, they had people come down. And then they were to go in, in back rooms and be prayed for. And there went my sister, <laughs> my little sister, Michelle. She's just a little kid. And, I'm, and the first thing that went through my head is I am going to be in trouble if I lose my sister. I'm going to hear it at home. But you know what? She, uh, she answered the altar call, and uh, she went in the back room, and, and lots of people, hundreds and hundreds of people came, big church. And you know, she's still serving Jesus today, and uh, she's a wife and mother, and, and praise the Lord, she's uh, got to be in her, I don't know how old she is now. I'm one of 10 kids. I can't keep, can't keep track of all their ages, but... And, uh, and so praise the Lord. I, I am, I'm so happy to have John here with us today. But John had had a worldwide, let's see, I read that 20, 23 years ago, Chuck Norris attended one of John's crusades where he accepted Christ. As a result, CBS did an entire episode of Walker, Texas Ranger featuring John and his team. Praise the Lord. And uh, my, my mom and dad love Texas Walker. <laughs> And so I know they saw that episode too. And, uh, but, but since the beginning of his ministry, John has been seen over, I'm sorry, has seen over a million people come to know Christ at his crusades. The last and most important factor, John has a passion for seeing the lost saved, the brokenhearted healed, and the depressed encouraged while Christ getting all the credit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, John, it is a blessing to have you with us today. You know what? I was wrong. So you're, you're ready, to, ready to go. Let's give a warm welcome to our Brother John Jacob. Praise the Lord. This is a beautiful place. Come on, somebody. How many would rather be here than New York and California? Someone say, thank God. And your pastor is the nicest guy. I told my wife and my best friend on the phone, I said, this guy is a real deal. And thank God for Pastor Brent and his big heart. And uh, I appreciate him so much. And it was his birthday this week. How many know that? The whole church knows that. But I'm, I really respect a pastor with a big heart. And he's as real as real gets. So I want to tell you, I'm, just, I'm happy to be here. Uh, for you that don't know, I started the power team at 17 years old, and uh, God just used my gift and my talent to win souls and to make a difference. And what we what we've done for the last 15 years is church growth crusades, and God has given us a tool to draw the community into the church. Now, how many of you know most revival meetings have almost all Christian people? But it's worth coming tonight just to see who comes. God has given us a tool to draw the community into the church. Last Sunday night, we had 33 men come forward and give their hearts to Jesus. A few weeks ago, two hell's angels saw one of our flyers, came to church Sunday night, and they got saved. This year, we've seen three police chiefs a federal judge and a senator's wife give their hearts to the Lord. And uh, how many of you believe God's called us to be fishers of men? And tonight, I feel something big coming. Come on, everybody say, I feel something big coming. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, tonight, I'm, let me tell you how I'm here this morning. Um, we did 50 crusades last year. It's all over 14,000 people saved. And all of them with my team, a former NFL player, world renowned sea carrier. But you know, since COVID, how many of you know 47% of church attendance is down? Yeah. Did you know 40,000 churches have closed since COVID? Before COVID, there were 600 national evangelists. Now there's under 100. And last year, I, told, I felt the Lord speak to me. That one or two Sundays a month this year, I was going to go to a church without my team. 
and just be a blessing and impart the gift of faith and be a blessing to them that maybe you couldn't have my whole team. So since COVID, I believe there needs to be an encouragement in the church. How many believe that? Come on, somebody. Amen. And so that's why I'm here today. And tonight, I normally have my big guy, my team with me, but I'm going to do some of the beats of strength. Pastor has asked me to do some of the, the tougher ones. I don't, I'm a little bit worried about that, but since it's his birthday, I'm going to do it for him. They've got a, normally we bend a little horseshoe, like a donkey shoe. You, you know what they have for me to bend tonight? A Clydesdale horseshoe. It's the biggest horseshoe in the world. And they said no man could bend this horseshoe. How many want to see if I can bend that all the way around tonight? I, I'm going to rip the biggest phone book, almost 60, over 70 inches thick. I'm going to grab that giant book and rip the whole thing in two. Tonight I snap a hammer over my chest. I'm going to bend the big steel bar, probably snap a baseball bat, and um, you know what? I'm going to roll up and go into my frying pan, give you a little taste of what we do in our meetings. But you know, tonight, I'm going to preach on the power of God is real. And on Sunday nights, I pray over the people, and we have been seeing an incredible move of God. When we've been, you know what? I believe in the power of Jesus in us. Yeah. And tonight, I'm going to tell a story that I can't tell in every church. But I've been to 40 countries. How many think I've seen things in preaching um, in Muslim countries, communist countries? And, but I'm going to tell you the most powerful thing I've ever seen was in Johannesburg, South Africa, with 22,000 people there, and I had a showdown with the, the satanic high priest of that continent, and 47 satanists went to the ground. And what God did was so incredible that 10,000 people got saved in two minutes, and the next day in the paper, it said hundreds of people had called in saying they thought the roof of the Colosseum was on fire. And they heard people shouting Jesus for 15 miles away. So tonight I'm going to share that little story. I'm going to speak on the power of God. I'm going to do some of the beach strength. How many think it's okay to have fun in church in Illinois? Come on, somebody. And, uh, but you know, I want to ask every one of you, amazing, like, you know, I grew up right by Illinois, southern Indiana. And did you know, every fall, my grandpa took me hunting and fishing in Illinois. Some of my best memories are from Southern Illinois that made a difference in me as a boy. So I want to just tell you, I'm really happy to be here. But I want to ask all of you, my favorite Southern Illinois people, would you, would you go home and make an effort to make five calls and invite some people? You know, God blesses a church that pulls together. How many know one can put a thousand in the flight, two can put ten thousand? That means if one person makes an effort, you might reach a thousand people. But if two people make an effort, you could reach ten thousand. How many of you believe it moves God when people pull from souls? And you know what? I don't care if you're 90 years old or you're seven years old. How many believe you can make an effort for God? Friends don't want friends to go to hell. Come on. And how many believe we are living in the last days, and if we're going to do something for God, we better do it now. Come on. So I want to ask all of you, would you please call some people? Would you make an effort to invite some people? Tonight um, is going to be very exciting, but I just want to ask all of you, please be here tonight. And please call five people today. Invite your neighbor, your unsaved brother. It's worth coming tonight just to see who comes. You know what happened a while back? One little grandma from the church put up one of our flyers. You know who came to church Sunday morning? You won't believe it. A man came forward and got saved Sunday morning. His t-shirt was so vulgar what it said, I couldn't believe it. His hair was wild. I don't think he'd ever been in church in his life. But he was crying and accepted Jesus. So 
the Holy Spirit says, go put your arm around him and tell him that you love him in Jesus and, you know, make him feel important. And so I went down and I said, brother, are you accepting Jesus? He goes, yes. And then he whispered something in my ear I'll never forget. You know what he tells me? I brought two banks. I said, what? He tells me he's a modern-day bank robber that's getting saved. And he's crying, and I believe him. So, you know, I didn't know what to say. So, you know what I told him? I said, I want you to go home this afternoon, and I want you to bring every criminal you know today, and I'll bring the handcuffs just for you. You know what happened? He walked in that church Sunday night with 19 men. You know who those 19 men were? The leading crystal meth dealers in that county. That night, all 19 and two of their girlfriends came forward and surrendered their lives to Jesus. And guess what happened? The sheriff called me two weeks later. You know what the sheriff told me? Your meeting changed the atmosphere of the county. So how many think tonight we don't need just another get-together? We don't need just another church service. We need a God happening that changes something. Come on, somebody. So I'm going to ask all of you, call some folks. We're going to have fun tonight. And I, I just love your pastor, Brett. What a, what a nice, Christ-like, super person. I just appreciate you, Pastor. And uh, for you that don't know, I'm a, a, a whole missions because we go into many schools all over the nation. You know, for the last 40 years, We've been in up close to 40,000 schools now. And at one time I had seven teams going into schools. But when we go into a public school, how many of you know they wouldn't listen to me if I just had a warm up on? But how many think if we press a 400 pound log and we smash something and then snap a hammer or a bat over our head, how many of you think we get their attention? And when you get their attention, under the anointing, we put a message of hope in those kids' hearts. Little kids, we speak about being a hero versus a bully zero. They, little kids cheer for themselves. We tell them this world needs you. High school kids, we speak about being a dream maker versus a dream breaker. The power of pulling each other up, not pulling each other down. And then we say, come back tonight at so-and-so church and bring your parents. And then we pass a flyer out to every student so they can take home to the moms and dads and get them to come. And that night, sometimes hundreds, uh, we had up to 300 kids come from one school and they bring their moms and dads. And that's how we see a big major impact on our city. Uh, two weeks ago, the last week of school, we were in 10 schools. Have you ever heard of El Central California? It's one of the roughest areas outside Los Angeles. You know what the sheriff said in Los Angeles? These kids have never listened to anyone. But you know you could hear a pin drop. It's the power of God grasp their hearts. How many of you think it's a miracle we get to go where preachers can't go? Come on, somebody. But I want to tell you this morning, we're living in the last days. It takes a lot to shock me. How many believe that? I was bit by a poisonous snake in Africa, almost kidnapped by 12 men with machetes. I had to be moved in the night in Jordan because the Muslims wanted to kill me because our crusade got so huge. I have seen things, so it takes a, you know what shocks me now? Is when I go into a school in the last three years, I just met a principal and two teachers that have been wearing a bulletproof vest for three years so they won't be shot dead in the classroom. When I go to schools now, every school, I, I hear stories. I, you know what? A school we were at the other day, the number one basketball star hung himself for the basketball of gold. When I go to school now, you know, one out of three little girls sexually molested one out of five boys. Did you know last year, Close to a million young people were reported missing in America. 
You know what the number one increase in crime in America is? Not murder, it's human trafficking. All hell has come against America's kids. I'm going to tell you, they're wanting to teach kindergartners. You're no longer a boy or a girl. There's 50 of them. Come on, somebody. How many of you know that? Did you know? I'm going to tell you something that's going to shock you. We were in the schools just a few miles from here about six months ago. And you know what the principal of the schools, about just about a very short distance from here, you know what the principal told me? We had to put kitty litter boxes in all the bathrooms in all the schools because so many kids were saying they were of the feline race. Somebody give me, how many of you know these are the things you see the Bible in the last days? Did you know I, I told pastor, I have um, some information. I believe the Antichrist is alive right now. You want to hear something that shock you? How many know what happens in Israel? It's a time clock, what happens around the world. You know what just happened in Israel for the first time in history? In the city of Jerusalem, on the front page of the Jerusalem Post, you know what the headlines read? That the Jewish rabbi priests and the leaders of Judaism have been secretly and privately meeting with who they call the modern day Messiah. You know what we know that as? The Antichrist. So what I'm trying to say is I believe we're living in the last days. And my friend, COVID was an attack on the church, period. A spiritual attack. But don't be fooled. God will have the last word. And how many believe there's an outpouring coming that's going to shock you? I said, how many believe God is going to shock the world? Come on. And it's coming very, very soon. So this morning, I just wanted to share a little bit about what I do. Pray for me as we go into schools next fall. You know what God promised me? He promised me that this fall, we were going to see something we've never seen. That God was going to give us an impact like we never had. Oh, I, I'm going to show you what was in my Bible this morning. Um, we were in a school recently. And, you know, we pray over the school. And we pray over, the, you know, before the kids come in, no, one, no one's there. And we spoke in a high school. And you never know what an impact the Holy Spirit can have. Because two teenage girls came that night. And you know what those two teenage girls, they came up to me. And one of them reached in her pocket. And you know what she pulled out? Two bullets. She said, you see these two bullets? We had made a suicide pact. We were going to so-and-so field, and we were going to kill ourselves today. But you came to our school. And she said, Tonight, they came forward and got saved. And she said, I brought the bullets, and I keep the bullets in my Bible. So I can always remember, we got to go to one more school. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Amen? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to share just a really brief little message. I don't do speaking engagements. I only do divine appointments. <laughs> and I don't want to be a guest speaker to this church. I want to be a friend to this church. I don't live very far away. And Illinois is a good place to fish and hunt. Amen? And I want to be a friend of this guy right here in the front row. I really love that guy. Boy, if anyone ever said one negative word about you, I want to bend them. Amen? But uh, I'm going to share prophetically. I've been praying about what to say this morning. And one act of Jesus... By an everyday common person, God can use that to change the world. How many of you know that? That God only needs a little bit to do a whole lot. The question is, will you give God your little bit? I'm going to read you a story this morning. It's why the Apostle Paul wrote the majority of the New Testament. 
And I'm sure most of you know the story of Saul, that he was a member of the Sanhedrin. And Saul, he was a Roman officer. And you know what he loved to do? And it was his job to hunt down Christians and kill them. But how many remember God, a bright light surrounded him, and the Lord said, why do you persecute me? And he went blind. He said, God, what can I do? And how many of you know the disciples laid their hands on him, and the scales fell from his eyes, and he was filled with the Holy Ghost and saved? Well, guess what happened? The first thing he did is he went out and preached. And he preached, I'm sure, his testimony. How many of you know it's hard to argue with the testimony? And you know what happened? The religious leaders said, we've got to kill him. And we've got to kill him tonight. Now, this is before he became the Apostle Paul. This is before everybody was impacted. This was right after he, he basically was a new Christian. He preached his first sermons, and in the very beginning, they said, we're going to kill him, the religious leaders, and we're going to kill him tonight. And I want to read to you what happened. This is a very, very powerful story. In Acts chapter 9, can you put that on the screen, verses 23 to 25? It says that after that, many days were fulfilled, and the Jews took counsel to kill him. Now remember, you know, the apostle, he wasn't the apostle. He was, they still called him Saul. And remember, he, no one knew what was going to happen with him. Are you with me now? In fact, a few scriptures before that said even the disciples didn't know whether to believe him or not. Next scripture, verse 25. In verse 25, it says, The disciples took him by night and they let him down by the wall in a basket. Now, this is very interesting. The Jews said, We're, We've got to kill him. His testimony is too powerful. Can you imagine? And you can't argue with the transformed life. And they said, we're going to kill him. But you know how, the, how Saul, the future apostle Paul, these men took a basket and fastened ropes to it, and they lowered him down through a window in the wall. But you know what? How many of you think they did not know who they were lowering in that basket. They didn't know he would write the majority of the New Testament. Come on. How many know they didn't know he become one of the central people to change all of history? They just thought they were holding the rope. Holding, and I got thinking about this. How many of you believe it's not easy to hold a rope for a big man? I don't think the Apostle Paul was small. As a Roman officer, a member of the Sanhedrin, you know, from what church history says, he was a bigger man and a heavier man. You know how hard it must have been to hang on, to hold the ropes? You see, I can relate to this story. I've got a 120-pound German shepherd, and he's only one year old, and I was holding his rope, and we were jogging, down a hill, and guess what my 120-pound German Shepherd saw? A cat run in front of us. You know what he did? That, he pulled me so hard, I went flying face first down the hill. And my hand got ripped open by the rope, by the leash. And I've had these, for, what, for two, three weeks, I had these big, deep cuts and rips in my hand. And I got thinking about what it felt like. It wasn't easy. They were inconvenienced. But how many of you know they were lowering the man? 
that would write the majority of the New Testament. How many of you know you never know when you hold the rope for someone how God's going to use them? How many know what matters is we got to hold the rope? And this morning I want to talk about the power of reaching out to help pick somebody up. You know I'm convinced of? I've met presidents of countries, very rich people. But you know what I, how I believe God measures our life? Not in how many dollars we have or buildings we have. You know how I believe God measures us? How many people did we pull out of the ditch? How many people did we pull out of the ditch? Every Christian has to be involved with picking people up, pulling them out of the ditch, and holding the rope. How many know you're here today because somebody held the rope for you? How many know what I'm talking about? Come on, somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you this morning the power in holding the rope. You know what I believe? One plus one does not equal two in the anointing of God. You know what the Lord says? One plus one equals 10,000. When you reach out to help someone, pick somebody up, to hold the rope, how many of you know God can't resist turning that into a comeback story that's going to shock everyone? Come on, somebody. When they were lowering that rope, how many of you believe God's thinking, I'm going to use him to write the majority of the New Testament? How many think you never know what's going to happen when you hold the rope for someone? This morning... I just want to take a few minutes out to tell you the people that have held, held the rope for me. When I, I was born in a very dangerous city called New Orleans. How many of you think in those days the nastiness of Bourbon Street, Mardi Gras, but you know what? It was a very dangerous city when I was born. In fact, my neighbor was killed by a robber with a stabbed to death, and my other neighbor had a shootout. And there was crime everywhere, and spiritual warfare, and today even, there's open signs in the French Quarter saying, for witches and warlocks. Very, very, in fact, when I was a little boy, six years old, my mom and dad got divorced. My, my dad was a TV producer. He used to produce the NFL games for the Saints. But then my dad went to California and never came back. And I found myself having nightmares. I was insecure and I stuttered. I couldn't say five words straight. And you know how I dealt with it all? <laughs> right behind my house, there was a big bayou. And I went fishing every day. <laughs> you know, some kids turn to drugs. Some kids turned to alcohol, I turned to fishing. <laughs> and so that's how I, I went fishing every day when I was six years old, seven. And you know what? I was in trouble in a dangerous city. But my grandparents were my two favorite people in the whole world. And somebody say, thank God for grandparents. And my grandparents, they lived in Evansville, Indiana. How many have ever heard of that town? Everybody? And they would come visit, but this time it was different. They wanted me to come live with them in this beautiful, safe, Midwest town. And my grandparents took me in under their wing. They adopted me. And my grandparents bought a house right across the street from a great church, just a few feet away. And I got saved the first time my grandparents took me to church. At nine years old, God healed my stuttering tongue. He took away my nightmares. And my grandpa, my grandfather, he was a tough guy. He taught me how to hunt and fish. I killed my first squirrel when I was nine years old. He cleaned it. My grandma cooked it. And yes, I've eaten squirrel. But what I'm trying to say is this. My grandparents held the rope. My grandparents held the rope. When I was in trouble, Go, growing up in church, 
You know, the church gave me a chance to be involved in the ministry when I was 13. At 13, I worked with the mentally handicapped people. And our church had about 1,000 people, but we had 70 adults that had the minds of children. We bust together, and we had a special service for the mentally handicapped. And I worked with them and picked them up and helped them get on the bus for three years. And after that, my church asked me to teach Sunday school. Now I'm this big guy. I started working out with an NFL football player when I was 12. And you know what happened? They asked me to teach junior high Sunday school. And we start out with 50 kids. But guess what? When I promoted, and a month later, we, I swallowed a live goldfish. If we have 200, I didn't dream they'd do it. But they had 230 in Sunday school in my junior high class. And I had to swallow a live goldfish. But guess what? I know seven of those kids are in the ministry today. And that's the first time to Sunday school. My church... They taught me how to lead someone to Jesus. My church, they took me out and helped me be a soul winner. They gave me a burden. And they believed in me and said, John Jacobs, you're going to do great things for God. They believed in me. My church held the rope. How many of you think this church holds the rope? Come on, somebody. And I remember when I was a, a junior in high school, my church had, I was on my way to become number two strongest teenager in the United States. And my church, guess who, had, guess who they had for a crusade? The world's strongest man, Paul Anderson. He came to my high school and he got under a table and he lifted 10 people by himself. And my whole high school of 2,000 kids went, shoo. And they listened to every word he said. And he said, come back tonight to the church. And I'll press 200 pounds with one hand. You know what happened that night? Half my football team got saved. A few months later, my church had this karate guy come. Karate for Christ. And he cut a watermelon off the pastor's stomach with a samurai sword blindfolded. But you know what? He came, to my, he came to my high school, and he broke some bricks. He did some things, and all the kids went. And you know what he said? Come back tonight to the church, and I'll crush 2,000 pounds of ice, one ton with my arm. You know what happened that night at my church? The other half of my football team got saved. You know how I know it's real? Because we started a prayer meeting before school. And we got up to 700 students in the school auditorium meeting and praying and praising God. How many of you understand it's because somebody held my rope? I said, how many of you said because somebody held? And ladies and gentlemen, I saw a guy on TV rip a phone book in two, a world strong man. I said, I could do that. Then I saw Mr. Universe blow up a hot water bottle to it exploded. I thought, I could do that. So guess what? I took two of the football team that got saved. And the summer before my senior year in high school, we did 17 crusades at country rural churches. And I would break one stack of bricks. One of the guys would blow up a hot water bottle. And the other guy would bend a steel bar. They'd give their testimony and then I'd preach. And did you know? God only needs a little bit to, to do a, a whole lot. Because then I went to Bible college. Now I'm bench pressing 600 pounds. I'm this really strong guy. And a detective says to me, I could teach you how to break handcuffs. And I said, no, no, you can't. But after two weeks, I broke my first pair of handcuffs. So you know what I started doing? Going to prisons with a couple of the guys, from the, you know, the, and I would break the handcuffs and preach to them. You know what happened at those prisons? Instead of the normal little Bible study, the whole prison would come to see me break the handcuffs, and they'd all get saved. I remember selling my spare attire for $25 to have gas money to go to one more prison. Then one day I was at Bible college. And they said, 
John Jacobs, you won't believe who's on the phone with you. And I said, uh, who's on the phone? And they go, Pat Robertson from the 700 Club wants to talk to you. I thought, wow. So I ran and I thought, Pat Robertson from the 700 Club wants to talk to me? He said, we want you to come on the 700 Club and share your story. I said, sure. And they flew me to Virginia and, and I, I preached, I gave my story. And you know who called me a few weeks later? The biggest TV network in the world. The biggest TV network in the world that's on TV uh, in 150 countries. You know what they said? Can you come and break your handcuffs and preach and we're going to broadcast it to the world? And I said, sure. In Miami, Florida, I remember preaching and then snapping the handcuffs. And I guess uh, most people turn by Christian TV. But when I went, I guess people quit and they stopped. And all I know is when I prayed with everybody watching to accept Jesus, it caused such a commotion of impact around the world. You know what the TV network said to me? We want to film your crusades and broadcast them every day in other countries and three times a week in America. Woo! You know what happened after a couple years? We were filling the biggest coliseums in the United States. Then I went to Russia. We were on TV every day in Russia. You know how many people came in the Olympic Stadium? 85,000 people. And we saw over 20,000 give their hearts to the Lord. They said it was the biggest crusade ever in the history of Russia. Then I was in Venezuela, Caracas. They used a bullfighting rink and 60,000 people came, and over 20,000 got saved. In South Africa, we were there for three months. A quarter of a million people gave their hearts to Jesus. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? Years later, I would be preaching in Dallas, Texas, and guess who's in the crowd? Chuck Norris. All of a sudden, Chuck Norris comes forward, and the guys behind me go, look who it is. It's Chuck Norris. How many of you know 23 years ago, the number one action TV show was Walker, Texas Ranger? And you know Chuck Norris and I become real good friends. And Chuck Norris um, says, we go on vacation together. We, we, we're very close friends until this day. I talked to him every once in a while. Chuck Norris said, we want to do a whole Walker, Texas Ranger show featuring you and your team and show how it changes the roughest school in America. I said, sure. It's called The Principal. The whole show was with me and my team and it showed the impact what God has done in my life. That was 23 years ago. Two years ago, I was talking to Chuck Norris on the phone. You know what Chuck Norris told me? He said, John, do you realize we've re-shown your show hundreds and hundreds of times around the world? He said, probably one billion people have seen your story for God. And you know what hit me? It's not my story. It's the story of the people who held the rope. How many of you think when you hold when one act of kindness, God can use it to change the world? Come on, somebody. How many know they didn't know who was in the basket, but they were holding the rope? And I want to say to everybody in here, I'm going to pray over you. And you know what the Lord told me to prophetic pray over you? The anointing of divine appointments this year. I believe we're living in a very important day for God. How many know you've been born for such a time as this? And how many of you think God will put you at a certain place at a certain time and he'll give you an opportunity to hold the rope? How many of you think God is the author of opportunities? Come on. How many believe the doors God opens, no man can shut? Come on. How many believe God raises one up, God brings another down? Come on. 
And you know what? God loves to turn setback stories into comeback stories. How many of you know he's a restoring God? And God uses people. So I'm going to pray that over you. But would you bow your heads and close your eyes? With everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to pray. Oh, Lord, Holy Spirit, come. Lord, I pray for the people that are here. Jesus, I pray you begin to touch them. I pray for miracles. I pray for encouragement. I impart the gift of faith to them. Faith to believe for what they've never seen. I pray the curse will be reversed in Jesus' name. Well, I'm, I'm going to pause for a second. I want to ask, with your heads bowed and eyes closed, how many people here would say, Lord, count me in that prayer? Maybe th this morning you're discouraged. Maybe this morning you feel like you're not where you should be with God. Maybe you're here this morning and the devil's been accusing you and you've been discouraged. But would you say, Lord, count me in that prayer? How many here? Just slip your hand up and God will see your hand. Praise God. I see that hand and that hand. How many others? I see that hand. Anyone else says, Lord, count me in? I see that hand in that hand. Anyone else? I see that hand in that hand. God sees your hand. Anyone else? I'm looking across the crowd one last time. Say, Lord, count me in that prayer, especially for me. Lord, I pray that you would touch every person in this church this morning. I announce salvation. I announce the anointing. I announce God's forgiveness. I announce miracles over this church. Lord, I pray for new anointing, fresh oil. Lord, I pray, Father, for the anointing of divine appointments and divine surprises. Lord, fill the rest of this year. And Lord, I ask you to put these people, every one of them, in the right place at the right time with the right people. That you'll give them a story. You'll, you'll give them the chance to hold the rope. Lord, you'll multiply their efforts. You're going to be their increase. Now everybody pray with me. Everybody in this building say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I surrender all to you. Here I am, Lord. Not just part of me, but all of me. I surrender all to you. I pray, Lord, that you would use my life. I receive the anointing for divine appointments, divine surprises. I pray your favor would come upon my life. Today begins a new season of God's favor on my family, on my finances, and upon my future. Lord, whatever I can do for you, I want to do it for you. My gifts and my talents, my opportunities, they belong to you. And from this day forward, I'm believing for a new anointing. I'm going to walk in God's power. God's going to open my doors, and God is going to raise me up. And I'm never looking back. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's raise our hands and thank God right now for his restoring power. His delivering power. Thank you, Father, for your favor. Thank God for a new season of God's favor on your family, your finances, and your future. Father, I praise you and I thank you for it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, before anybody else moves... Before I turn it over to Pastor Brett, you know what I perceived this morning? This is a family church. How many agree this is a family church? You know what it means to be a family church? When the devil picks on one family, he's got to deal with all of them. Come on, somebody. How many know we pull together in a family church? So can I talk to you like a family church for a minute? In the 40 years I've been going into the public schools, I have never 
imagined I would see what I'm seeing right now. Would you please trust me? Did you know suicide doubled last year? Did you know there were 40 shootings in our schools, and one of them was by a six-year-old in the first grade that shot his teacher to death? The church can't hide out and just pray about who gets elected. How many know God has always called the heroes from the church? How many of you know that? This is an hour for heroes. But here's what I want to tell you. It's not easy. The Lord promised me this fall we were going to have the biggest impact we've ever seen. God has supernaturally put us in schools that I never dreamed would open their doors. And people ask me, how do you do it? How do you bring your team? It costs us $1,000 for every school we do. But you know something? When schools ask me how much does it cost, I tell them $1,000, but I said somebody else has already paid the bill. Do you know in 40 years, we've never charged one school? We've never charged one church? We pay all the expenses? You know why? Because we go to the schools that can't afford it. We go to the schools that give a free breakfast and free lunch to every student. How many know what I'm talking about? And you know, the only thing, you know how we do it? You know how we've done uh, 4,000 crusades in 40 countries and 40,000 schools? It's all we do is take up one offering per service. I ask God's people to pull and to give to the Lord. And did you know? When somebody gives to the Lord, a miracle begins and it keeps on going until Jesus comes back. Do you know, in our meetings, did you know God uses people? And the reason I'm excited this morning is last week we had three schools in the state of California that are three of the most troubled schools in the nation. But we don't have a sponsorship for them. And I have to let them know, yes or no, in 10 days. And you know what I've been praying all the way here last night? God put in my heart that this victory was for this church. How many of you believe this is not just an Illinois church? How many believe this is an America-changing church? Come on, somebody. In just a moment, can everybody see this envelope here? Everybody in here is going to receive this envelope. And I'm going to ask every one of you here to take out your checkbook, take out your bill phone, your debit card. Don't get nervous. You know why? Nobody has ever been hurt giving to God. How many of you know you can't outgive the Lord? How many of you believe that whatever you give to God can never be a loss? How many know it's always a gain? And I'm going to ask you to pray over this this morning. And you know... COVID tried to wipe out the church. It wiped out almost all the evangelists. And in fact, my guys had to sell their houses. One of them had to start delivering bread. And we used up our savings, our reserves. We went four months and we couldn't get in. We didn't raise any support for schools. But you know what the Lord promised me? When the church is open, God spoke to me, don't worry about how big they are. And don't worry about how big the city is. Just go. You know what happened when the churches opened after COVID? First place we went was Hot Spr uh, Climax Springs, Missouri. You know how many people lived there? 190. But we had 400 at our crusade. Over 100 except of the Lord. And one grandma, one grandma, she wrote a check. She's 92 years old. For 10 schools at $10,000. And the next place we went was Roach, Missouri. The church had gone down to nothing. But we saw it packed out. One 16-year-old girl who's a waitress at Captain Ron Seafood, she took one of our envelopes and she sponsored four schools out of her tip money. She's a waitress at Captain Ron Seafood on Lake of the Ozarks. And everywhere we've been for almost two years now, God has sent heroes in every one of our meetings. And how many of you believe this is a hero kind of church? 
How many of you think I would love to call those schools Monday morning and tell them that Metropolis, Illinois, that this church has made it possible? And how many of you think this would be a miracle that would go down in the history of this church? In a moment, you're going to be handed this envelope. You know what? Every week I pray, and every week since COVID, we've had people write a check and sponsor a whole school. She wouldn't believe. I had a lady in the front row. She had a little baby. She came up and gave me an envelope. You know what was in the envelope? Ten $100 bills. She goes, I want to sponsor a school in the name of my baby. She goes, but we're homeless. I said, what? She told me they're homeless. I prayed over her. God honor her seed. Two weeks later, she called our office. A contractor found out about her and gave her a house worth $140,000. How many believe you can't outgive the Lord? And this morning, you know, I've been praying all week. The Lord put in my heart to believe for two heroes in this church that would sponsor a school in the name of their family, in the name of their kids. You know what? Sometimes someone said to me, oh, we have a small crowd here this morning. But you know what I've learned? Never underestimate a country rule church. Never underestimate a country rule school. And don't ever underestimate what a smaller crowd can do for God. Come on, how many say I'm right? How many think I'm right? Come on, somebody. And this morning when you receive this envelope, I believe the Holy Spirit's going to speak to two of you to write a check for a school and go down in history as one of our superheroes. But more importantly, how many know everybody that gets saved, every life that's ever been changed or ever will be in our ministry will be a star on your crown in heaven. Amen? And you know what the greatest mission field in the world is? It's America's public schools. How many believe that? I want to say one last thing, and then we're going to hand you this envelope. But you know what I'm basically asking you to do this morning? Is hold the rope for me for this fall. How many of you believe this is the most important time I've ever had in my life? Come on, I said, how many of you believe this is the most important time I've ever had in my life? How many of you think I need a church to hold the rope? for those three schools. I'm going to ask you, when you receive this envelope, I'm going to ask everybody here to pray over something, give something you'll remember, let the Holy Spirit speak to you, and I want you to plant a seed. for what. How many of you are are believing God for something this year? How many of you have been asking God to come through for you in some way this year? Let me see your hands. Then I'm going to ask you to plant a seed for what you're believing for, and this is what I'm going to say. We were in Virginia, and we were doing five schools on Monday. How many of you think it's not easy for three guys to do five schools? But you know who came up to me Sunday night to church? A little grandma. And this little grandma comes up to me. Oh, she was about five feet tall with her hair, maybe six feet tall. But she was so sweet. She goes, John Jacobs, can you go to one more school? Now, how many of you know I have a soft place in my heart for grandmas and grandpas? Uh, They raised me. I said, but uh, uh, ma'am, she goes, my granddaughter goes to this school. Her mother's a heroin addict and shoots up heroin. And her father is the meanest drunk in this county. She goes, and she pulled out her checkbook. She goes, I want to plant a seed to save my granddaughter. And she wrote a check for $1,000 and she handed it to me. Now, how many of you know at that point, I didn't dare say no. How many of you think God would make a way to honor the faith of this grandmother? So we did. She had called the principal. And the next day, I think what, one of my guys had to go to, and we went to her school. And this school was a junior high. And when we did the feats of strength, all the kids cheered, but one but one student, we noticed she had her head down the whole time. After we gave our talk, the kids cheered, but she had her head. After everybody filed out, one little girl, 13 years old, was sitting there, and I went up to her. I said, are you okay? She goes, what do you care, man? I went, whoa. And I took out a flyer. I said, here, come to the church tonight. Bring your parents. She goes, are you kidding me? My parents won't take me to church. My mother's a heroin addict, 
and my father's the meanest drunk in this town. And I, something, I, I, I started remembering something. That, and and she, I said, what if the church picks you up? She goes, can they pick up the whole volleyball team? I looked at the youth pastor. The youth pastor said, they picked her up in the whole volleyball team. And she and the whole volleyball team came forward and got saved. And she came up to me. And you know what she said to me? John Jacobs, my name is Ray Ray Sanchez. And I'm sorry I was rude to you today. She goes, but my mother and father are very abusive to me. I said, well, let's pray right now. We had two more nights at that church. Let's pray for your mom. I said, in the name of Jesus, we agree. Guess who comes to church the next night? Her mom. She gets saved and delivered from heroin. But we have one more night. and We're going to pray for your dad. And everybody just looked at me. They go, you don't know who he is. So we agreed together the last night, five minutes before service started. The pastor looked out the back doors, and he looked like he'd seen a ghost. He said, my God. And I looked. There was a man that was six foot five, 350 pounds, cigarettes rolled up each sleeve, and a giant cowboy hat on, and he looked meaner than a Texas rattlesnake. Guess who it was? Ray Ray's dad. And you know what happened that night? He was sitting in the back like this. But when we broke some stuff, snapped some stuff, he goes, yeah. I go, Holy Ghost is going to get him now. And he ended up walking forward, got radically saved. He said, I want to get baptized. And he pulled out a letter announcing to his family that he was leaving tomorrow and never coming back. He tore up the letter. Instead, he got baptized, and that family joined the church, and they go every Sunday. And you know who it was? The little grandma that said, I want to plant a seed. How many of you know God just needs one hero to act in faith? And then how many know he can use their faith? Come on, somebody. And this morning, would you pray over this? I know someone said to me, you know, we don't have a real big crowd this morning. You know what? I thought, don't ever underestimate what a smaller crowd can do for God. Can somebody say amen? How many of you know God doesn't need more numbers? Come on, somebody. So this morning, when you receive this envelope, I'm going to ask, I'm believing God for two heroes today. They're going to sponsor a school in the name of their family or their children. Maybe, maybe somebody here could write a check for all three schools. How many think I'd be the happiest man in Illinois? Come on. But how many want me to announce tonight what comes in this morning? And how many of you believe after tonight we'll see those three schools come in? And how many of you think I'm never going to forget Lighthouse Assembly of God from Metropolis, Illinois? Come on, somebody. How many of you think God could do that? I pulled up here last night. And I, got, I got lost twice, my GPS. And I pulled up and I just stopped. And I didn't see Pastor yet. And you know what the Holy Spirit spoke to me? This church is going to surprise you. This church is going to shock you. This church is going to encourage you. So how many believe God has put me in the right church this morning? Can the ushers can come forward and have an envelope to everybody here? Uh, is the, the men here that have the envelopes? Um, can you grab the envelopes and, and help me? I want to be sure that everybody get an envelope and a pen. How many believe the Lord could do that this, this morning? Come on, somebody encourage me. If not us, who? Will you go with me to the schools? Will you go with me to the schools? Would you hold the rope? This morning I need a church to hold the rope. I'm going to ask ushers, can you come and pass out a stack to everybody here? And if you need a pen, the ushers, can you grab some pens out of that box? If you need a pen, just raise your hand. And the ushers have some pens. Uh, ushers, you've got some pens there. Um, everybody get an envelope. And I'm going to ask you to pray over this envelope. I'm going to ask you to make between you and the Holy Spirit. And I want to promise you this. I've been doing this 43 years. I've never had one person ever say to me, boy, I gave God too much. But I've had thousands tell me that God came through for me. He honored my seed. So I'm going to ask you to pray over this envelope this morning. And I'm going to ask you to make this a holy offering. 
When you give to missions, there's a special anointing when you give to missions. And would you pray? Jesus said, first, go to Jerusalem, then the uttermost parts of the world. How many believe America's schools is our Jerusalem? So everybody hold an envelope. I want you to pray over it. Everybody here get an envelope. This morning, I need a couple heroes in this school. I need a couple of men to be heroes this morning. I need the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I believe you're going to speak to everyone here. So everybody hold that envelope in your hand, and let's pray over it. I've never had Indiana or Illinois let me down yet. They've come through for me every time in helping me in the schools. How many believe this church is going to surprise me? Hold that envelope in your hand. I want you to pray over it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the people in this church. Lord, I thank you, the world shakers and history makers. And Father, I pray that you would speak to everyone here about, about what they should do. Lord, this is a seed they're planting in your hand. This is them holding the rope for me. Father, everything that you've ever done in my ministry, let it be a star in their account. Father, I thank you. We're going to see those three schools come in, and we're going to rejoice over this miracle. Now, everybody here say, Holy Spirit, speak to my heart. What would you have me give? Now, just wait a minute. I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking a figure to everyone here. I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to those two heroes that the Lord told me to pray for. They're going to sponsor a school. I believe God's speaking. Maybe someone sponsor half a school. But whatever the Holy Spirit, the figure, it's between you and the Holy Spirit. God is your increase. Father, thank you for this church. Thank you for their holding the rope for me and, and our ministry and going in the schools and holding the crusades. Lord, thank you for the precious people sitting here. I pray you'd honor their seed and whatever they're believing for, transfer it from heaven's treasure room to their life on this earth. In the name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. if you're making a check, just make your check to John Jacob's Power Force. You know, a, lot, a lot of people don't carry checkbooks. So on the back of the envelope, if you choose to give by a um, card, any card will work. And we do shred them after we run them so nobody will ever see your card. So if everybody could t take one minute and fill out your envelope. Come on, somebody agree with me that we're going to see those three schools come in today. How many believe God could do that? Come on, somebody. Everybody get your envelope ready. Ushers, could you have a, could, could you, um, do you have an offering take plate back there? I, I'm going to come back there, and I want you on your way out this morning, when you put your envelope in that offering plate, I want to thank you, and I'm going to say God bless you. But would you get your envelope ready, and I'll be at the back door, I'll, I'll be holding that that offering plate, and I want to personally say thank you for going with me to the schools. Man, well, thank you, John. <clears throat> you know, John has a, a heart, obviously, for the lost, and uh, God has called uh, some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and it's for the building up of the church. And uh, in 3 John, the Bible says in verse 5, Dear friend, you are acting faithful in whatever you do for the brothers and sisters, especially when they are strangers. They have testified to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God, since they uh, set out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from pagans. Therefore, we ought to support such people so we can be co-workers with the truth. And, uh, you know, John, uh, he, he, he pressed about finances, but it takes finances to do ministry. It takes finances to get into uh, the church uh, uh, or the, uh, the schools, and uh, he's relying on the body of Christ. And that's biblical. That's biblical. So praise the Lord. Well, um, praise the Lord. Aren't you glad you came to church this morning? Amen? Amen. Now, he didn't do any feats of strength this morning, but this evening, come back, and he's going to do a number of things, and uh, I have, um, you know what, I need to uh, get these into your hands. 
um, I have little flyers for you to uh, give to friends, family, neighbors. And uh, if I could have some people help pass these out. Kaylee, you want to help pass these out? Okay, give them to yeah, give, give, give a few to everybody. Give a few to everybody. And uh, here, you wanna, here, Courtney, you want to help too? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, get a few into everybody's hands. Uh, give it to a neighbor. Maybe you, even if you go to a store, stick it under a windshield wiper blade. And uh, let's, uh, let's pray and, and believe that our, this church here will be packed out. Amen? People getting saved and... and it's a multiplication. It just keeps going and going. Praise the Lord. Let's see. John promised that as we fill out these envelopes that he's not going to call. He's not going to sell the, your names and in contact information. It's going to be shredded. And... Uh, uh, and, and some maybe it weren't prepared to give but, uh, today, but you could always, you could always send this in. Um, praise the Lord. Well, afterwards, uh, we're having, a, uh, having a, a, a meal in the Christian Life Center, and everybody is invited to that. And, uh, and also, sometime uh, today, before we all disperse, if I can have a powwow with the, uh, with the deacons, and uh, we just need to connect on uh, when we have our next deacon meeting. And uh, it's been, been a little bit. Months have been so busy. All right. All right, so we all, we all ready? <laughs> ready to disperse. And to <laughs> so, John, you're, connect, you're collecting the envelopes there. Yes, yes, and one tonight. All right. Well, let's all stand. Amen. Lord God, Jesus, you said that your, the, the work that the Father gave you, you have now given us. And Lord, it's working in your harvest field. Lord God, one day the car we drive is going to be no more. The, the place where we live is going to be no more. This world is going to be no more. Lord, the things that we love to do and, and, and uh, things we enjoyed purchasing or places going to eat, it's all going to be gone. And Lord, there's just going to be eternity. And Lord, people are going to be in, in one place or the other. Lord, they're going to be either separated from you forever in eternity in hell or, Lord, an eternity with you. And, Lord God, it is your heart, your desire. You want every single person, the meanest person, the, 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 the most evil, wicked person. Lord, you want them to turn to Jesus because, Lord, you change hearts, you change lives. Lord, as your word says, if any person be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, the new has come. Lord, you give us a brand new start. And Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, that you've called us to work together in your harvest field. Lord, bless us today, God. Give us boldness. God, uh, direct us, Holy Spirit, even uh, divine appointments today, Lord, to invite others, Lord, to come tonight. And we pray, Lord, all the advertising that has taken place, all the flyers that is, have gone out, Lord, we pray, God, that you'll touch the hearts of people, Lord, that they would just be compelled to come to, to tonight's service, and Lord, to never be the same again, Lord, as they meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, we thank you for our time together today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Bless them, Lord, as they have given today, and we give you praise for what you're doing and what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for joining us online. Uh, we will be televising uh, tonight's service also. And uh, praise the Lord. God bless you.